joining us. We'll have that story in a moment. But first, a Fox Chicago exclusive. Some residents are being warned to get out of town before the NATO summit starts. Darlene Hill has our report live from the South Loop. Darlene. Yeah, Bob, that, that warning came by this piece of paper here. It reads, the revolving door will be locked on Friday. The rooftop terrace, theater room, and hospitality suites will be closed. Well, it's a yellow memo. Some residents say they saw it on their mailbox, and they saw red. I can't just leave my garage whenever I want. Um, they're holding us hostage in here. Sabina Kreidlinger lives in a condo at the Library Tower. It's a 17-floor building in the South Loop on State Street between Harrison and Congress. It's a busy area, lots of businesses and colleges and a high school all within a couple of blocks of each other. People who live in the Library Tower, though, say they're used to it all until earlier this week when each resident got this memo in their mailbox, letting them know what they can and cannot do while the NATO summit is taking place in Chicago May 19th through the 21st. I think they've got everyone's best interest in mind. It's just uh, pretty sh kind of shocking to see. I had no uh, idea this was going to be happening that weekend, and so it's uh, pretty alarming to know it could be that scary in, the, in your own home. The memo states that management strongly recommends finding alternative places to stay during the conference. I, I think that's a big problem because this is where we live, and everyone doesn't have the opportunity or possibly not can't afford to go stay somewhere else. Um, it's a real problem. Management strongly recommends that residents have no guests that weekend. Each time residents enter, their identifications will be checked and no one will be allowed to move into the building or have packages delivered. While some residents are ticked off, others say it's all about safety. They're only suggesting that. I, I want to be able to uh, come and go whenever I need to. Changes because during the summit, Protesters will hold a rally at the Petrillo Bandshell, and their march will have them in front of the library tower. Those protests in other cities have turned very violent. Now we're back out here live tonight at State and Harrison. We tried getting in touch with the management department of that building, and they did not want to talk to us on camera. I did, though, Bob, call around to a couple of the other mid-rises and high-rises here in the South Loop, and they tell me they're pretty much doing the same thing. They say it's all about safety. They don't, of course, want any problems, and they don't want, of course, to deal with any of some of the other stuff going around the weekend of the summer. So they say they're trying to do what's best for the building as well as their residents who live in them. Back to you in the studio. I used to think my job was all about arrests, chasing bad guys. Now I see my work differently. We analyze crime data, spot patterns, and figure out where to send patrols. It's helped some U.S. cities cut serious crime by up to 30% by stopping it before it happens. Let's build a smarter planet. Yes, folks, it's all about keeping you safe. Again, keeping you safe from yourself because you might start to think, why would there be so many people protesting this NATO summit? Hmm, I wonder why. No, I don't want to think about that too much. I just want to make sure I can go to Starbucks and uh, go wherever uh, easily and go in and out. Besides that, I, I don't really care what they're protesting about. I don't really care about much. Um, just as long as I can do my thing. So, But don't worry, um, little sheeple there. Uh, when there's black helicopters flying overhead like they were recently, getting prepared to keep you safe, um, just know that they're there to protect you. So, I mean, yeah, they're going to be shutting uh, districts and areas down. So, I don't know if you remember this. Red Light's newest pre-crime technique. This is from January 20th. The police department in the city of East Orange, New, Jer New Jersey, sorry, are installing red light spotlights to remotely shine on those pol uh, police believe are about to commit a crime. That's right. So he's shining on him. I think he's smoking a cigarette because eventually it will be a crime to smoke a cigarette in public. In fact, in New York City, Bloomberg wants to ban cigarette smoking, uh, cigarettes in uh, apartment buildings completely. Some you can, some you can't. So... Uh, then this uh, one, this video here that you just saw prior to that, predictive analytics. Police use analytics to reduce crime from IBM to catch the bad guys. So it says here, web surveillance plans create nation of suspects. So, of course, it's all about uh, criminalizing everybody. Everything is a crime. And it's just when they're not enforcing it, it's because it's the good guys, the police. Um, they're just being lenient on you, right? They're just, uh, you know, they're not that bad. 
So this year, government proposals to extend powers to watch what people do online would create a nation of suspects, says uh, MP David Davis. The former shadow home secretary said the government should be restricting surveillance, not trying to extend it. Powers granted to police that let them see personal data without a warrant should be rolled back. And he says others uh, warn the proposals risk undermining fundamental social ties necessary for a civil society. So the comments were made during a debate on the plans held at the London School of Economics. It says here the Home Office defended the proposals by saying it is vital that uh, pigs and security services are able to obtain, i.e. spies are able to obtain uh, private communication data in certain circumstances. They're talking about every phone call, every text message, every email that they store. I think there's even a video that was on uh, Democracy Now! that you actually have an NSA uh, employee that thinks that it's so bad that he is leaving. So this just gives you a little clue of how bad it is to investigate serious crime and terrorism. So remember the terrorists are the ones that are out there protesting against uh, this uh, NATO, basically this global police military force that basically is trying to conquer the planet um, and, and just basically steal resources from people. So. Uh, it says here, and to, oh yeah, and don't forget, and to protect the public, which is a bunch of sheeple. So, Homeland Security moves forward with pre-crime detection. So, internal Homeland Security document indicates a program to pr predict criminal intent is being tested on members of the public. So, again, so you're, uh, I think it was IBM that actually said the world is a la uh, the world is a laboratory. So, and you remember, you're the lab rats, the public. So, they're testing and experimenting with you on you. So raising questions about whether it's a bit too close to a real-life minority report. Well, welcome to the real world. This is minority report. Guess uh, post says here, pre-crime in America. And that was from 2011, just so you know. This is from 2012. It says the U.S. Department of Homeland Security is working on a project called FAST, the Future Attribute Screening Technology, remotely monitor physiological behavioral signals like elevated heart rate, eye movement, and body temperature, facial patterns, i.e. facial recognition and body language, and analyze these signals uh, algor algorithmically for statistical aberrance in an attempt to identify people with criminal or terroristic intentions. So again, that could be anybody, guys. Military wants better machine vision for smarter robot cameras. Do you remember this article I covered? But uh, just to give you some background, it says computer vision works much better than it once did. And it goes, that's why defense, basically DARPA, is doing research into vision in a program known as Mind's Eye. And it says the manager of the Mind's Eye project said that... Um, Basically, they're uh, trying to test this uh, software and technology to be able to recognize patterns such as a person about to be hit by a car that is backing up. And of course, to be able to predict those that might be carrying out terrorist activities. Misinformation campaign targets USA Today reporter editor. So USA Today reporter and editor investigating the Pentagon propaganda contractors have they themselves been subjected to a propaganda campaign of sorts waged on the internet through a series of bogus websites. Fake Twitter and Facebook accounts have been created in their names along with a Wikipedia entry and dozens of message board postings and blog comments. Uh, websites were registered in their names. The timeline of activity tracks USA Today's reporting on military's information operations, in, uh, psyops, psychological operations, guys, and trolls, which spent hundreds of millions of tax dollars on marketing campaigns in Iraq and Afghanistan, and campaigns that have been criticized even with in the Pentagon as ineffective and poorly monitored. For example, it says here, internet domain registries show that website Tom Vandenbroek uh, dot com was created January 7th, just days after a Pentagon reporter first contacted the Pentagon contractors involved in the program. And uh, it basically goes on and says that it was, uh, websites were created using federal funds. And of course, the lieutenant uh, colonel of the Pentagon says, we are not aware of any participation in such activities, nor would it be acceptable. So it basically went on and said that the websites were taken down following those inquiries. So it goes on here, it says that Vandenbroek said, I find it creepy and cowardly that somebody would hide behind my name and presumably make up other names in an attempt to undermine my credibility. Well, it's going to get even creepier, but you just hang in there. Next up, Department of Homeland Security buying up enough ammo to wage seven-year war against the American people. Talking about 450 rounds of 40 caliber hollow points. And then we have, next up, Republicans back Homeland Security powers in national parks. More than 50 national parks 
uh, and national forests within 100 miles of the borders within Canada and Mexico would be affected. So this, of course, is in the name of what? Border security. But they don't give a crap about social, uh, social security. They don't care crap about that, but they don't give a crap about border security because it's about open borders and uh, the North American Union like the EU. So they're trying to shove that down Americans' throats. And, you know, it's just like global warming. They don't care and climate change. They don't care about the, about the climate, about the planet. They're spraying with a bunch of metals and nanoparticles and chemicals. So they obviously don't care. They're going to continue to pollute as long as you pay them. National Guard withdrawing 900 troops from U.S.-Mexico border. I think that has to do it for uh, domestic civil unrest. But either way, this is one of their little toys that they got recently, Homeland Security, part of the special response team. Moving on, federal agents raid a flea market for counterfeit goods. No, it's because a bunch of people were trying to get some bargains and not have to pay taxes to fund their stupid wars by NATO, right? So I think Cindy Sheen's actually having a problem with she doesn't want to pay her taxes for wars. So it's like that one part with I think Maggie uh, Jellenhall from that movie uh, with Will Ferrell, Stranger Than Fiction, you know. And uh, what did Will Ferrell, the IRS agent, say? Are you are you part of an anarchist organization? So, so uh, and as things get worse, they're going to do things like this. This is a psyop, psychological warfare, which is race warfare. Uh, I beat up white man because I'm mad about Trayvon. So, yeah, I beat the heck out of a white guy because it's for Trayvon. Revenge for Trayvon, elderly man beaten for being white. That was on April 5th. And you've probably heard me mention in recent videos about, uh, you know, basically the government military being able to use drones to uh, take out, quote, terrorists in their backyards while they're barbecuing. Well... U.S. skies to be full of drones after it was disclosed that domestic law enforcement agencies from the FBI to local police have been granted permission to deploy the unmanned aircraft. FAA approved spy drones to fly U.S. skies. It goes on and says that they were used in countries such as Pakistan, Afghanistan, and Yemen. Well, that was actually to get all the money to fund this technology. Uh, for the real terrorists, which is U.S. civilians. Next up, we have the quad rotor flying machine gun, which would kick some serious ass someday. But in reality, this weapon is just a fun 3D animation, lifting the concept from Metal Gear Solid. And most of the video gamers, that's who will be manning those things, killing people, will be video gamers. Like Mr. Breivik, who played Call of Duty, what, every minute of the day. U.S. draws up plans for nuclear drones. They're not going to just strap machine guns. They're going to have nuclear weapons, and I think a directed energy weapons, lasers, tasers, heat ray guns, i.e. microwaves. U.S. Air Force places order for aero environment Puma small unmanned aircraft systems. But don't forget about the Pentagon's also putting in an order for dual focus contact lens prototypes, which allows them to superimpose data about targets. Next up, we have like a video game. Pentagon wants spy troops posing as businessmen. So in the name of terrorism, again, the Pentagon is asking Congress to authorize an undercover operation for U.S. military aimed at surveilling the overseas civilian sector. Next up, Israeli Army chief orders more covert ops. He said he's escalating all those operations or dubbing it the Depth core, maybe the Death core. Israel forces ready to hit Iran if ordered, says the chief of staff on Sunday. And then Israel's Lieberman visiting Azerbaijan and Switzerland. Well, we can guess Switzerland because, well, they're kind of the Bank of International Settlements financier and that to get the go ahead. And Azerbaijan is preparing for war against Iran. That's right. You have Israel actually selling weapons to Azerbaijan. Then Iran builds submarine force in Persian Gulf face off. Okay, and then we have Pentagon has successful plan with hundreds of tomahawks deployed near Iran against Strait of Hormuz. UN working with NATO to provide pretext for Syrian intervention. UN aid program to be used in establishing NATO humanitarian corridors, i.e. no fly zone in that. And R2P, Turkey mobilizing army following border clashes with Syria. Of course, this was all planned. NATO and Russia at odds over Syria's missile shield. Then American troops are deploying to Morocco. And then also U.S. Jordan to participate in 17 nation war games. Then to Asia, China sends patrol ship as Philippines standoff. So the Philippines deployed two more ships of their own. Russia-China joint naval exercise has kicked off, and Taiwan plans to buy four warships from the U.S. They've also, what, had staged military exercises aimed at a China invasion. North Korea issues unusually specific threat, saying it would reduce South Korea to ashes in less than four minutes. Also, North Korea to launch one satellite after another. 
calling South Korea's president human scum. Next up, Norway and NATO rehearse for war in the Arctic. And as the U.S. Air Force trains with Bulgaria, NATO to deploy more troops to Kosovo. And Afghanistan and the U.S. finalize post-2014 deal. Thank you.